notification at this time. We can post announcements and post uh, video updates and live streams and things of that nature that we don't get to do um, much other ways as nearly as effective as that is. So I would love it if you guys would join us, um, sign in there, uh, and just join just the Highland View Facebook page and so we can, we can stay in touch. This weekend, we've been doing family retreat and it's been a really neat experience. If, you, if you've been before or if you haven't been before, for about the last four or five years, uh, we've been doing kind of a similar format where we've got these packets uh, that I've been making for the last, like I said, four or five years. And what these do is they're, they're stations. Um, I found this cool uh, artwork uh, for the cover because I, I, I don't do artwork, I uh, don't do pictures, I'm, I'm no skill set there. So I found this cool artwork and I bought the picture and I've been able to make these uh, stations. And so you'll work through these stations and what's been amazing to see is while we didn't get to go to Pickett this weekend, we have been able to have so many more of you guys, so many more Highland View who don't get to make it to Pickett with us be a part. Uh, the, We've been working through these stations and we've been doing the live stream videos each day. And each day that we've been doing this, um, the live streams that we've been doing have had between 88 and 105 uh, unique uh, Highland View members uh, tuned in watching that. And that's amazing in itself because we don't typically have 105 people uh, at Family Retreat. And so the, the beauty of this has been getting to have so many more people get involved and get to do this together. Uh, as, as I said on last night's live stream, the only bad part is you know, that you only get to see my face and not everybody else's faces. But I love, you know, there's a comment stream on Ustream that people can talk back and forth. There's the comment section here on Facebook that people can talk back and forth. And you all, I encourage you to do that. Share. Uh, this morning as we keep going, continue to share, share things from the stations that we've worked through. So at Family Retreat, Sunday morning would give us the opportunity uh, to kind of wrap things up and talk about the stations that we have worked through. Uh, if you haven't done them yet, I encourage you to do so. The packet is in your email, it's on the Facebook page, I believe it's up on the website as well. And so, um, and I can email more of those out, but you'll have the, I would love for you to take the time uh, to work through that only because, uh, only for you, for the opportunity to have this kind of time alone with God. We, we started out, you know, the first few pages trying to just grasp this unique situation that all of us are in. Uh, and as we work through those first few pages, I was able to find uh, this prayer, and I shared it in the video last night, but it's, it's good enough that I'd really like to share it uh, one more time. This was written by a, uh, a United Methodist pastor in uh, Nolensville, Tennessee. Uh, he, he didn't attach his name to it, and so I won't, I won't step on his toes and attach his name either, but I, I find it to be incredibly well um, spoken from the heart. I believe it reflects the Highland View heart, and I believe it reflects his church's heart because we're both trying to reflect the heart and the character of God. And here's this prayer. It says, Holy God, our lives have been disrupted. We feel vulnerable and uncertain about what to do. We're told to stay at home to create distance, and by doing so, we are loving our neighbors well. But this is counter to our instincts and desires to be close to our loved ones, our friends, and our colleagues. Teach us in this strange time to find new ways of being connected in spite of our distance. Teach us to be patient with one another and to find ways to support those most vulnerable in our world. Strengthen us, hold us, help us, we pray. Help us to see what we have not seen, know what we have not known, so that all of our decisions are rooted in your great wisdom. This is our prayer. Uh, 
I, I believe that perfectly sums up where we all kind of are and where we've spent this weekend in, in family retreat. And so we started off with, uh, we started off with this first station. It's called Station of Thanksgiving. And we came from a place sharing what are some things that we're thankful for? Uh, what are some things that, if we're not asking God for anything, if we're not trying to rub the lamp, you know, if we're, if we're just being grateful and thankful, what does that look like? Uh, because our, we're really talking about joy, not happiness. Happiness is propped up on circumstance, and circumstance is pretty crummy right now for a lot of people. But joy is propped up on God, and God doesn't move. So that can always stand. So from, from a place of joy, what, what are we joyful about? And we write, Dear God, and we just write a note. Dear God, this is what I'm thankful for. This is what, from the, not from the surface level of my heart, but from the deepest, innermost place of joy. This, this is what I'm thankful for, even here and even now. Uh, looking at some of the things that were posted, um, we encourage people, you know, take pictures of, of some of your notes and, and post them on the Facebook page, and those have been amazing to see. It's been, honestly, my favorite thing of the weekend to go through and see uh, people's thoughts, and it's been really cool, and, and a lot of that that came out of it is peace, security, hope, uh, unchanging, calming, purpose, hope, hope hope, and hope. From there, we move into a station on forgiveness. And this is very purposely chosen to come right after this station on thankfulness, because putting us in a place of thankfulness, putting us in a place where we recognize joy over happiness and deep-rooted hope and security that isn't propped up on anything other than God, in that space, we can deal with forgiveness. And, and I ask everyone to think of just one person. You, you may have a hundred people, but think of one person, and, and that person may very well be you. You may write your own initials down to pray for. Pray for that person, pray for their family. If they have it, pray for their spouse, their children, their parents, their job their church, their, their church family. If it's you, pray the same. And it's this amazing place because we genuinely pray for them, whoever they are. But what we also know is that one of the reasons why we are instructed to pray for our enemies, pray for those who persecute us, is for our heart. It is to circumcise our own heart, to cut away the bitterness of our own heart and put us in a place of seeing everyone as an image bearer of God. Everyone is an image bearer of God. From there, we stepped into station three, which was on worry and anxiety. And the point here was very clear. As we list out worries and we list out anxieties, and we're basing this off of Luke 12, where, you know, it says, yes, don't be anxious. But, but I believe the point of the verse is right there in the middle, I, I believe it's verses 25 and 26 of Luke 12, that says, um, how many of you can add so much as a second onto their life by worrying? Um, it, it, it's the, the, running, the running joke between Kevin Reeves, um, who, as you know, is just so emotional and emotive and... Uh, uh, and my wife, who is so stoic and non-emotive and non-emotional, uh, is that uh, when Erin is stressed, and she, she will often uh, tell Kevin, it would help if you would just be stressed with me. And Kevin will give the line uh, from Bridge of Spies where the guy looks at him and says, would it help? And the answer, infuriating as it may be for all of us, is no, it, it wouldn't help. Um, the thing is this, verse 26 follows that up with, listen, <laughs> listen, I want you to understand that if you can't add a second onto your life, now if we know that's impossible, but for God, the idea of just adding a second is, is ludicrous. 
Uh, there's no way to get God's power small enough to think in, in those terms. My brother works for Google, and they have a saying, you know, when they're dealing with these numbers that are truly unfathomable, I don't even know what those, that the numbers even mean. And Google has this line that they say, said, we've forgotten how to count that low. God has forgotten how to count that low. But we can't even add a second. Not a second. And he said, so, so let me get this straight. If you can't even add a second onto your life, does it help? What's, what's the point? Now, are we going to stop? Probably not, unless you're Kevin Reeves. But it's a reminder of the place that we find ourselves. I, I cannot add a second onto my life by any amount of worry, any amount of stress, any amount of sleepless nights. I can subtract a lot of sleep. I can increase a lot of heart rate and I can increase a lot of blood pressure, but I cannot add so much as a second onto my life with worry and anxiety. And so what we look at is we look at station one and thankfulness from a source of joy. And we see how what we wrote in station one counteracts and meets everything that we could write in station three. From there, we went on to uh, station four, which is my favorite station. It's the station of Connect. It, it's always three to five songs going about 20 minutes. Uh, this year's was about 25 minutes of four songs. And you just sit and you just listen. Uh, and, and, you, and you let these, these words of the songs kind of wash over you and, and see what God says in these moments of worship for us. Uh, our songs were Simple Gospel, which is Will Reagan and United Pursuit, uh, SOS by We the Kingdom, uh, Here Again by Elevation Worship, and Whole Heart by Hillsong United. And every single one of these songs have such powerful, powerful lines, and I encourage you, listen to them. Listen to them again. Uh, look on the Facebook page. There were people in there uh, adding songs to it, making other suggestions. Listen to those. Look at the, we've got a playlist for Family Retreat that's 22 songs uh, that you can go through all of them. But just in that one last song in that station, song four, Whole Heart, I want you to listen to just these few words of verse three. This kind of captures what we were trying to get at in that station. Uh, it's described, it spent two verses and choruses describing God's infinite grace, desiring of mercy and not sacrifice. And in verse 3 it says, and that grace, that grace owns the ground where the grave did, where all my shame remains. Left for dead in your wake, you crashed those age-old gates, and you left no stone unturned. You stepped out of the grave, and you shouldered me all the way. None of this is propped up on our character. It's all propped up on Station 5, the character of God. See, we can, we can, we can write about our thankfulness and our joy from station one. And, and when that can put us in a frame of mind to better accomplish station two in forgiveness, and then to look at station three, our, our anxieties and our worries, and see how they are erased largely if we do the forgiveness part right, because a lot of our anxiety and worry comes out of that. And all of it is counteracted by number one, and then number four gives us this place of worship, but none of that matters without Station 5. Station 5 is the character of God. I said, you know, we, we focus all of our attention on Station 3. We forget Station 1 because we have completely forgotten Station 5 and the character of God. And so right at the beginning, we make the point in Psalm and Isaiah that the, the character of God is revealed to us as much as we can possibly understand, but there is no one who can fully grasp. We can't plumb those depths. We can't measure the width. We, we cannot put God into a box. We try. We try really hard. I, I was having a conversation a few weeks ago with someone about, uh, you know, Trinity and, and Father and Son and Holy Spirit and Godhead and all of these things, 
And, and one of the things, you know, they were saying, they were like, well, I, I don't really hear a lot about the Holy Spirit. I said, well, the Holy Spirit is all through Scripture, literally from the first verse through the end. Uh, and, and so powerful. And the reason why I believe that so many people don't talk about the Holy Spirit is we can't put God in a box ever. We can't put God the Father in a box, but we feel like we can. We think we can. And so sometimes we, can, we attempt to put God in a box. We, we, we cannot put Jesus in a box, but we sometimes think we can, just like, you know, predominantly here where we live, Jesus is, of course, a white, southern, gun-toting, Republican American, you know, because we, that's what we make him. And so obviously he looks and thinks just like us. Uh, but even in our wildest, most egocentric place, we all know we can't put the Holy Spirit in a box, and I think that terrifies a lot of people. It cannot be grasped. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. God's ways are not our ways. Jesus is so far above that John the Baptist, who everyone you know, saw as this great prophet and, 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 and was this great prophet, and, and some people thought he was, you know, come back from the dead and, and all of these uh, things and prophets channeled into him. And John says, listen, that's great. I can't even stoop down and take off the mucky, nasty, filthy, animal filth sandals of this Jesus guy who's walking up. Psalm 103 is where we get to the heart, I believe, of Station 5, because it stresses that we should never forget God's deeds. If, uh, if Scripture gives us anything, it is a roadmap of humanity forgetting who God is and what God has done over and over and over again. Psalm 145 restates Exodus 34, and Exodus 34, 6 and 8 is where it's at. This is God saying, God saying, this is who I am. This is my glory. The glory of God is what makes God God. The glory of this building is what makes this building. The building, the glory of the sun is what makes the sun the sun. It's the essence of the sun. The glory of God is what makes God God. And God steps out in Exodus 34, 6 and 8 and said, this is who I am. This is my character. This is my nature. This is what makes me tick. And this is what you can always know of me yesterday today tomorrow when you meet in huge buildings when you sit in small groups and when you are isolated in your home home this is who i am in all of those places in all of those circumstances station six is all about prayer um and i i encourage all of us to work through this i i, I I would love it if all of us would work through this weekly, monthly, if not daily, work through this. And, and adding, you know, um, I'm trying to remember which movie it was, uh, one of the, the film company down in Georgia that makes the, the Christian movies um, that I uh, occasionally love and occasionally make fun of. Um, but they had one, and uh, I don't remember which one it was now, but the lady had a prayer closet. And she would sit in this closet, and it was covered with post-it notes all over the walls where she would sit, and she would pray, and she would add things on post-it notes, and she would type things out, and she would write on the walls and whatever, and had this room where she prayed every day for everyone on, this, on these lists, for, for families, for church families, for uh, friends, for coworkers, for everyone. And I, I can't imagine how powerful that would be if we could all put ourselves in a place to remember to do that. Um, put ourselves in a place of prayer for our family, whoever lives in our home, starting with us. Uh, yeah, I think it was War Room. I think that was it. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was, because that was her War Room. Thank you. Um, and so if we could get ourselves in a place where we could pray with that level of fervor and that level of consistency. Because if we're all honest, I'm not sure that our consistency in prayer life is what we would, any of us would like it to be. Now, us not praying doesn't take anything away from who God is. 
but it does take some things away from us. We don't forgive people for their sake. We forgive people for our sake. We don't pray to God for God's sake. We pray to God for our sake. We don't, we don't gather in buildings or online or on live stream for God's sake. We do it for our sake because God knows these are things that we need. Station 7 uh, it's our final station of the retreat this year. And Station 7, uh, forgive me, I'm going to share some thoughts from this one. Uh, I, I shared these online on um, Facebook. I uh, shared these from uh, different places. I, I shared these in a, in a live stream video. And um, I shared these again throughout Family Retreat. But it's this idea of isolation. And we're in a place right now where isolation feels very real. It feels very much that it can be very easy for a lot of people to feel very alone. It can feel very easy for a lot of people to feel forgotten, unknown, um, easily dismissed. Um, and once someone feels that way for a second, then they largely go further down that rabbit hole. And it gets darker and darker and more quiet and more lost. And in those quiet moments, in those dark moments, that is where the enemy comes. Uh, the enemy loves isolation absolutely loves isolation. Separation from the group makes things so much easier because it, it, it's harder for us to discern the voice of the shepherd when we don't have everyone else around us hearing the voice as well. That's one of the reasons why we want to know the voice of the shepherd. We want to know the character of God so well that we can recognize any other voice and know that it's not his. So Station 7 is this, and if you didn't participate in Family Retreat, if you're watching today, congratulations, you're at least participating in Station 7. Here's, the, here's just the, there's paragraphs up the top that I would encourage anyone to read. But here's what I'm asking us all to do, and this is our, this is our station for today. You may have started last night. Uh, you may be doing this uh, starting right now during the live stream. You may start as we finish this, but this will be, the station that takes the most time, but I believe it's the station that uh, God really put on my heart as the most important one for this weekend. And it's this. Write notes, letters, or cards to 12 people and put them in the mail. A non-ironic number. 12 people. Put them in the mail. And, and listen, when you're doing this, you can pick. I'm going to go through the list of people. You can pick any people. You can, my encouragement is this, look through the, go to the Highland View Facebook page and click on members and look at the list of members. Uh, flip back to station six and you can see a bunch of different uh, people there that are in um, leadership or volunteer leadership or staff or preschool teachers or support or different things, get a list of people from there. You can go to Highland View Church uh, to the website, highlandview.church. And you can go to the member section, click on directory, enter the password there. If you need that password, you can text uh, me or uh, any of the elders or the office or anything, and we can get you the password to get in there. And you can see a photo directory of everyone here at Highland View to get names from there. And yes, reach out to the people that you know. Reach out to the people you are missing. Reach out to your small group that you're not getting to meet with. But what I would encourage all of us to do is also look through that list on Facebook, on the website, whatever it is, find people that you don't interact with on a regular basis. Find people that sit on you know, the east or the west side of the auditorium that you just you know, get to wave to from across the way. Uh, find people that you find a name that you, you can't quite put a face with it or you find a face and you wouldn't have been able to put a name with it and use those people and, and write notes cards or letters to 12 people and put them in the mail. The addresses are on uh, the, the Facebook, I'm sorry, the website directory. Beth has got everyone's address on there. 
uh, or you may have a pocket directory, but the website is more accurate, more up to date. Then I want you to take your phone, your iPhone, your Android phone, your whatever you got, take your phone, and I want you to send text message, a text message to 12 different people. Don't send everyone the same one, copy and paste. Pick 12 people, send them a message, a real message to them, about them, about their family, about their situation, about when we're sending these things, we're thinking, tell these people what they mean to you because I promise you they probably don't know. And if they do know, right now in the quiet and the dark, they probably are tempted to forget. We forget God when we don't see God for five seconds. So how much easier is it us to lie to ourselves that we are easily forgotten by friends and family if we can convince ourselves that we are easily forgotten by our Creator? So tell people what they mean to you. Tell people uh, a, a favorite story, a funny story, uh, what they have inspired you, how they have encouraged you, how they have made you a better believer, follower, parent, uh, spouse, grandparent, child. Um, reach out. And if you have Facebook, which I hope you do, and if you don't have Facebook, I hope you will get it. If Again, just to, to do nothing else with it other than come to the Highland View Facebook page so that you can see the information there. And look on there and see and send out 12 private messages to people through, uh, through the Facebook app as well. Then get your phone, call three people, and tell them they're not forgotten. Pick up an actual phone. Uh, text is really easy. I, I, I love the ability to write. Um, I, I, can, I can speak in a speech um, more comfortably than I can have you know, a, a conversation with a, a, a small group of people. Most of us tend to lean towards messages these days instead of phone calls. And so what I would encourage us to do is pick up a phone, dial a number, hit send, and let someone hear our voice, and let's listen to someone else's voice. Call three people. Call three people and tell them they aren't forgotten. Tell them something that you value them for. Then I want you to call one more person. After that, call one person. Pick one. Pray. Pray about this. Just like you, you prayed about um, Station 2, for God to lay someone on your heart about forgiveness. Pray about this one. Pray about the fact that who needs you to reach out in a special way? And, and, and God will give you that person. But pray about this. Pick one person and tell them how they have specifically influenced your life and your walk with God. Maybe it's in how you run your business, how you serve at church, how you parent, how you interact with your spouse, how you share Jesus with others. But let them know the impact they have had on your life because they probably don't know. And here's the thing, it works both ways. If we have come into a dark place where we have forgotten or possibly forgotten what people think about us, what people feel about us, what people know about us, then chances are they have done the same. Chances are in their quiet, they may have forgotten as well what we think about them, what you think about them, what you value in them. Chances are they may feel that they are easily forgotten, easily left out, easily removed. Now, if you're, you're keeping up with my attempt at non-ironic math, 12 notes or cards, 12 text messages, 12 Facebook private messages, three phone calls, one phone call, and at the end of that, you will have been Jesus, hands and feet, on this Palm Sunday, to 40 people who I guarantee need it. And I can guarantee that it's 40 people who need it because God is not going to just leave you out to not know who to send these to. 
I, I, I don't believe that. Um, and I believe that every single person in this body right now could use that touch point, that reminder that someone loves them, is thinking about them, is caring for them, is wanting them, is missing them. That, that's one of the greatest things that came out of the, the live streams and the chats for these family retreat over the last few days is the fact that we could see the joy in getting to have a few interactions with each other. That we could see the, the pain of missing being together. It's a good reminder that we all miss being together. Nobody misses, um, nobody misses pews and podiums and stages and red carpet and anything. We miss who gathers here. We miss being with family. It is hard to be separated from family, and this is why we are encouraged all through Scripture to not stop um, getting together. So use this time. Twelve notes or cards, twelve text messages, twelve Facebook private messages. Call three people on the phone, then call the one. And you'll know who the one. You'll know who the one. And I, I really genuinely have absolute confidence and certainty that this is, uh, that God is going to do amazing things through this because this is God's idea <laughs> and not mine. That's how we wrap up Family Retreat Weekend. That's how we wrap up Station 7 by reaching out by being hands, by being feet, by being hearts, by having the tender heart that we talked about, by having a place of family. So this week, continue this. Don't forget what we talked about these few days. Don't forget the stations that you went through. Don't forget all of the things that God said on the mountaintop if you happen to find yourself now in the valley. What God said on the mountaintop is just as true in the valley as it was when God first said it because God was, is, and will be. So let's remind each other. Let's remind each other of who God is, but let's remind each other who God says they are. Let's remind each other that every single person watching this on Ustream or Facebook Live or YouTube or whatever it is, on a podcast, it, it does, every single person was emphatically made to be an image bearer of God. Every person was made in the image of God. We created them, male and female, in our image. And so let's remind people, you are God's masterpiece. You were formed like a potter forms clay to form you. You were crafted as a poet sits down and painstakingly pours out their soul into words of a page. That is how God describes God's design of you, God's masterpiece. Don't forget who God says you are. And one of the songs um, is actually the same one, Whole Heart. It says that God calls you out by God's name. And this is what I want to close with. God calls you out by God's name. Not, not that God calls you your name. And I know I've said this before, but, you know, coming up on, on Easter, I'm, I'm always reminded one of, my, uh, one of my most beautiful images of the story of the resurrection is Mary uh, at the tomb walking, uh, distraught, lost 
and she hears Jesus call her name. This is beautifully described in the, the Jesus Storybook Bible, the kids, the Jesus Storybook Bible, I love it. Uh, they, they have an audio version of the Jesus Storybook Bible, and this scene in that is absolutely incredible. Look it up, find it online, I'm sure it's on her website. Um, a CD came with the Bible, if you've still got that, it's probably on YouTube, but they, they narrate the whole thing. But this, this section, this scene, of Jesus calling Mary's name and Mary knowing that voice is one of the most beautiful things that I can imagine. And it goes beyond that because it says God calls you by God's name, not just your name. See, God, just, God hasn't brought us into foster care, which would have been an amazing thing for God to do. God hasn't allowed us to sleep on God's couch, which would have been an amazing thing to do. God hasn't just even called us by our name and invited us to walk alongside of him, which would have been an amazing thing to do. God calls us by God's name. Understand the power of what that means. God calls us out. We are lost we are alone and god calls us out by our name to get our attention and then gives us god's name fully adopted with full rights full love full inheritance and to the family of god because we now belong to the family of God. We now are called by God's name. God's children. God's brothers and sisters. God's spouse. God's family. God's name. Love you guys very much. I have loved this weekend. Uh, family retreat uh, has just, just completely blown me away. What God has done. Uh, taking something that I personally was so uh, sad about not getting to physically, you know, go to pick it and have this. And, and what God turned this into is that we could have so many more Highland View family involved that wouldn't have gotten, wouldn't have been able to go to family retreat, wouldn't have been able to be, be there in person, have now been able to work through these packets and do this. God took this packet um, and, and had, uh, uh, had we, we've had a hundred, uh, over, over, a little bit over a hundred pastors from around the country at 27 different states uh, have, have requested this packet to do with their church families. Uh, a couple from a couple different countries have requested this packet to do it with their church families. And I find that absolutely incredible to see what God is doing. It's amazing when you see God do something that you know you had nothing to do with, no part of it. But us being isolated, God is using even that. God does not cause the terrible. God does not cause the, the evil. God does not cause the heartache or the tragedy. But it says God comes in to that tragedy and comes into our mess and comes into these things and works those pieces, broken pieces, shattered pottery. And he takes those pieces and he works them back together for good. God takes the shattered bits of our lives, picks them up, even if we shattered them, even if I threw the vase, God picks up the shattered pieces and forms a mosaic. The pieces are broken. Some of the pieces are jagged. Some of them are sharp. Some of them cut me and some cut people around me that I come in contact with. But he works them back together for good. Love you guys very, very much. Um, Yes, uh, make sure um, rules still apply as, as uh, no one's allowed to leave picket until, you know, the ranger has come and checked us out. Uh, everyone clean their houses today. Um, I, I love you guys. This has been such an amazing weekend, and I really thank all of you for participating in, in every way. 
and I just, anytime, anytime that God's people spend time with God, we are richly blessed and amazing things happen. And so stay in prayer for each other. Really, truly do Station 7. Don't check it off your list. Do not do it. Don't check it off your list. Don't say, you know, ah, you know, I got close or I don't really have time for that one. <laughs> or that, you know, you, you did a few of them or you don't know that many people. I didn't ask if you knew that many people. Right on people you don't know. I don't care. But these are the numbers. 40 people. 40 people. Touch 40 people. Be Jesus to 40 people. Love you guys.